Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red- Wait a minute. Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Riku's Story Episode 3. In the last episode, we defeated Iago. What's he then that says I play the villain when this advice I give is free, honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the more again for his most honest? Oh, uh, wrong Iago. We defeated Genie Jafar is what I'm, what I'm getting at. And now we're going to continue. We're going to continue to the 10th floor. And from here, we're going to use the next world card, which is indeed going to be Monstro. Now, as you noticed, these world segments are actually very, very short. Uh, with Riku, anyways. Much shorter than with Sora, uh, where we had to go through different levels of story. And this, we just go right to the end boss, man. And we get the key of beginnings, of course we do. Hello, Monstro, how I hate you. And, as always, I'm gonna bounce around this room a little bit and clear some enemies. This is actually a wonderful place to level up, so I recommend using your meeting ground cards whenever you can here. Just trust me, it'll help. Get over here. There we go. Oh, baby, we leveled up. And we got an almighty darkness, not bad. And we are going to put more into our health. Again, because Riku is so uh, not able to heal. Is that, a, is that what I was trying to say? Not really, but you know what? It'll work. Uh, we want to make sure that his health is as high as it can go. All right, let me, uh, let me just, let me just throw this. Oh, damn it. But before we go much further, let me just go ahead and show you our new deck now that we're here. So each world, obviously, you're going to get a little bit changed in a deck here. So our first combo is going to be really strong. Our second combo, though, we start with a 1. So I recommend using your Genie Jafar card that you just got in most of your battles here. Now, we also get a Search Ghost, absorb enemy HP when striking with attack cards, but fewer items dropped. Now, because items don't really drop for us, this is pretty useful. Uh, although I don't really recommend it right now. It is very useful, though, in the boss of this level. Just keep that in mind as you proceed. Like it. Room clear. Let's go ahead and use the first door of Monstro, which is just a level one. We'll go start off with a tranquil darkness. Oh, I love it when things go smoothly, baby booze. And we will find ourselves in this next room here. I'm going to pick this up, even though... Maybe I can... Oh, nope. Oh yeah, okay, that worked. Cool. And we leveled up from that fight, so of course we're going to put it into attack boost because it's there. So it is every three levels. And that's what I thought. And we got a random Joker card. That's amazing. Let me show you what a random Joker card is in case you don't actually remember one. From way back in the day, a random joker fulfills any criteria except key cards. That is incredibly useful. Just throwing it out there. With this room now clear, we can go ahead and use this door. Because it's, luckily for us, you know, there's not a lot of choices here. So we'll go ahead and use our level 4, or our value 4, I should say, Sleeping Darkness card to open this room. And we can just kind of walk all of, all around these guys. We don't need to worry about it. We can go ahead and use this door next. And that's a level 5 or higher. We have a level 5 Almighty Darkness. I don't know if I feel comfortable using that just yet. Uh, I would... You, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna be a man. I'm gonna be a man about it. I'm gonna use an Almighty Darkness because I'm a man. That's right. I love at least how all of these only have like one door to use. That's kind of handy, so we'll go ahead and use a level 6 here. Uh, let's go ahead and use Feeble Darkness. So we just used Almighty Darkness, now we get to use a Feeble Darkness. We're just opening all the doors, no big deal. And, well, we know what stands before us, right? There's only one story door in each world. So this one, well, this one's gonna be a boss. We need, specifically, a green 5, uh, or higher. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Stagnant Space here, level 6 or value six, and our key to beginnings, and there we go. We pretty much just completed Monstro. What a good rhyme, Corey. You're so good. You should be a poet. Here we go. Here we go now. A battle against Parasite Cage. You may remember Parasite Cage from such things as Kingdom Hearts 1, and of course, Chain of Memories. Now, this fight is going to be super similar uh, to, I'm gonna go ahead and break that, 
and then see if we can actually do a duel here. Oh, come on. There we go. And we will hit it with Maelstrom, which is going to do some damage for sure. Uh, and then we're going to see if we can just hit him as much as we can. Now, I'm actually going to... Uh, I didn't mean to do that, but I want to switch to our... There we go. And I'm actually going to use our dear old Mickey here, who's going to be able to use our Holy Burst to do some damage. Now, it's not going to do much damage, but it's damage nonetheless. And then we can go ahead and just lay in to this dear Parasite Cage. We're actually just going to sit here and just attack as if it doesn't matter at all. Because you know what? It definitely doesn't really matter. The Parasite Cage is one of the easiest bosses, I feel like, that you fight in this game. So we're just literally going to sit here and, uh, you know what? I feel like finishing him with a Holy Burst. Let's hope that this actually will do that. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, baby. All right, you know what? There we go. Down goes Parasite Cage. One of the easiest boss fights in the entire game, seriously. And we get a level up. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. And we get the Parasite Cage boss card, which I will show you in a second. After we distribute our stat points, of course, uh, let's make it a mighty 200 health pool. All right, we defeated we defeated Parasite Cage. We basically just completed Monstro. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what Monstro actually does for us. So, oh, I mean Parasite Cage actually does for us. Always nullifies the enemy card. Uh, it's only a limit of one use. I don't really, I don't really think it's that useful, to be honest with you, uh, throughout this game. But, you know, to each their own. I mean, you might have a use for it that I don't. Uh, alright, so we do need more map cards, and Monstro is a good place to level up, so I'm gonna do that. I feel pretty satisfied with getting some of that, so let's continue towards the end of Monstro, the end of the 10th floor of Castle Oblivion. Wow. We're cruising, cruising through this game. And in the last battle of this of this almighty darkness room, we ended up getting another level. So we're going to go ahead and put that into our darkness points, our DP, and then we will continue on through this door every time. Every time I say DP, I know one of you giggles. One of you viewers, I know you and you giggle, guaranteed. <laughs> Killed all these heartless while sleeping. All right, moving on. Let's go. <laughs> Enough of that DP talk. All right, so we have three different rooms that we can use. Obviously, the one that we need to use is this one. That leads to Conqueror's Respite, which is this room up here that we couldn't go to before. Uh, and here it is. We cleared Monstro super quickly. Like, like my God, did we clear it quick. So we'll go ahead, get some health, and I highly recommend saving at this save point. You really, really, really should. You're going to need it, trust me. So we'll climb up this spine, I guess, if you will, and we'll go ahead and save the game. All right, and now we can proceed through this door, but be prepared, my friends. Be very prepared. I take it you're Riku. Are you with Ansem? You are half correct. Let us say that he is not the Ansem with which you are familiar. He is Ansem, and he is not Ansem. Perhaps a nobody best conveys the idea. Riddles were never my thing. Try again. He belongs to neither the light nor the dark, but walks the twilight between. <laughs> Catching on now? Oh, yes. You also stand in between the light and the darkness. It appears we have much in common. Maybe. Like you said, there really is darkness left inside of me. But so what? Darkness is my enemy! And so are you for reeking of that awful smell! Oh, -ho, so it's a fight you want. Very good. I shall take you on. And our first fight against an Organization 13 member is none other than Vexen. You may remember Vexen from Chain of Memories Sora's story, where he actually created somehow 
a Riku replica, if you will. Now, right off the bat, we're actually going to go and try to get a duel here, which is perfect because we were able to do that. We will hit him with a Maelstrom, which is going to do a lot of damage. And then hopefully we will be able to get right behind him for an attack. Now, what we want to do here, what we want to focus on doing, no matter what, while we're facing uh, this, this powerful, powerful Vexen, is we want to make sure that we card break him as much as humanly possible. He is very, very strong. Uh, but now he's going to end up using that. We do have some zero cards that we can use. Although I don't highly recommend using your zero cards on uh, on that Ice Needles because it's so easy to get through it. All right, so now he is going to end up... Uh, uh, we're going to end up hitting Dark Mode. And now what we want to do is not get hit by any of that. See if we can use Dark Break. This is a very, very dangerous strategy, and I don't don't really recommend it. Unfortunately, he's going to push us right out, right out of dark mode uh, way too quickly. He's going to break us with a zero card, uh, and then we are just going to lay into him with our own, and then we're going to see if we can duel him, because dueling is super important in this game. I hope you all realize that, and we will hit him yet again with another Maelstrom down. Uh, down he goes a uh, whole health bar, which is pretty darn amazing. Now, we want to see if we can stay on him as much as possible. He's probably going to use the zero card. If he does, we want to make sure that we break it. Uh, I'm going to get ready because he's probably going to cast Ice Needles. There we go. And unfortunately, I did end up using uh, a couple cards that I shouldn't have. Uh, that's going to hurt, but that's okay. We'll lay into him, break a little bit, use that potion card. He wasn't able to use Diamond Dust, which is amazing because Diamond Dust does a tremendous amount of damage against you. Uh, that is an attack that you absolutely need to break. If you don't break it, you will die. All right, so we're going to break that, and we are going to enter Dark Mode yet again. We are going to, right off the bat, use Dark Fire Go, which is going to take out a junk of his health. Hit him again with Dark Fire Go, bring him down to his final health bar. Now we are going to hit him with Dark Break. I really, really don't recommend using Dark Break. Now what we want to do is we want to line up so that we have three nines, and then we will go with Dark Aura, one of our most powerful attacks, and down goes Vexen. Dark Aura is an incredibly powerful attack. Three nines. That is the only way to do it is with three nines. Of course, he could break it with a zero card, but we got lucky, and we will get a level up. Oh, Dark Riku. You're so good. And, of course, we'll put that right into our attack points. So we have 16 now. Nice. Nicely done, Corey. You're so good at this game. <laughs> I find coursing through you there is a darkness of formidable power growing. Well worth the trouble of aggravating you. All this excitement has provided me with invaluable data. What? <laughs> Many thanks, Riku. It was a trick all along. All right. Well, let's continue up to the ninth floor. Now, we all know what that data is going to be used for. It's going to be used to create a repli replica Riku, a dark version of Riku that is going to battle Sora. So that is how Riku came to be. Alright, so we are going to end the episode here. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please drop it a like and uh, subscribe if you want to. And showing up on screen right now is a video that was chosen specifically by YouTube for you to watch. Literally, that happened. And the playlist for the original Chain of Memories Sora story. Be sure to click that. And if you want to support the channel monetarily, may I recommend clicking on the Patreon button and becoming a patron today and getting rewarded. Thank you all very much for watching. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to the darkness.